with more on Fiona and what the storm left behind. We're now joined by three members of Parliament. Cody Blois is the Liberal MP for the riding of Kings Hanson, Nova Scotia. Dr. Stephen Ellis is the Conservative MP for the riding of Cumberland Colchester, also in Nova Scotia. And Richard Cannings is the MP for South Okanagan, West Kootenay in British Columbia. Hello to the three of you. Hello, hey, Michael. Good afternoon, Michael. Uh, Mr. Blois, I'm going to begin with you here. As you were in your riding this past weekend, what was it like to be there? What did you see? Uh, look, uh, certainly King's Hans was spared the same impact that we saw in Cape Breton, in Prince Edward Island, and Western Newfoundland. Uh, but we saw extreme uh, weather in terms of wind. Uh, I think the recorded elements were uh, up over 100 kilometers an hour, uh, lots of downed trees. Lots of individuals without power, uh, particularly our agriculture sector, uh, sustained some level of da damage. You can think about the fruit growing sector in the Annapolis Valley. There's a number of apples on the ground. So uh, there remains households in my riding that don't have power, uh, but we're in a much better situation than some of the scenes you would have seen from Cape Breton, Prince Edward Island and Western Newfoundland. Mm -hmm. Better situations, you say, but regardless, a powerful storm that ripped through the Atlantic. Dr. Ellis, I'm wondering if you would talk to us about your experience and what you saw when you were in your riding and really the kind of stories that you're now hearing from people across the province. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for that, Michael. You know, realistically, the biggest thing that we see, uh, down trees, power poles, houses uh, without roofs, businesses without roofs, uh, the, uh, the arena in Truro without a roof. Uh, so we know that this has a very, very significant impact. Uh, when I left this morning, about 40% of Nova Scotia power customers were still without power, uh, which, of course, then uh, leads on to the difficulties with spoiled food, etc., uh, it's been it's been absolutely devastating, and certainly uh, to echo my colleague's comments, uh, we know that in Truro the maximum sustained wind was around 132 kilometers an hour, so uh, very very significant wind and significant amounts of rainfall. Uh, and to add insult to injury, there was a warning for a water spout uh, coming up the Bay of Fundy uh, early this afternoon as well. So difficult uh, conditions remain, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Difficult conditions, and and you know, Mr. Cannings, I, I think it speaks to the difficulty, the fact that you don't represent a riding in Atlantic Canada, but still you, you asked for the speaker and did get a, a debate on the situation in the region. Why did you take that step? Why do you think it's important to be having this debate? Well, I mean, first of all, my thoughts are with the people uh, who live on the Atlantic coast of Canada. I have lived uh, there in uh, for a number of years. I lived in on the island of Newfoundland. So I know what Atlantic weather can look like, and and I know the the strong resilience of Atlantic uh, people, but uh, I'm the NDP critic for uh, emergency preparedness and climate resilience, and I've witnessed you know disasters over the last few years in my own riding, uh, and I felt that we really needed to talk about this, to talk about how the federal government needs to move in and and help these individuals, these communities, uh, they can bounce back, but they really need help now. And it's it's an important debate to have right now to, to really dwell upon what the government can do now and in the future to, to help these people and communities. Mm -hmm. and, and it's interesting because as you say, there's the immediate and then there's the, the long-term discussion to be had around this. Uh, Mr. Blois, I'm going to bring you back in because the Prime Minister, as we all know, did cancel his trip to Japan to keep an eye on the storm as it passed through the Atlantic region. Uh, military is now being sent, in some cases have arrived. When it comes to Nova Scotia, what do you think the focus will be in the short term? What do you think the focus needs to be right now look and and we welcome the opportunity to have that conversation that debate tonight in the house of commons and as was i hope articulated during question period uh the government of canada has moved swiftly to support the provinces uh in both the atlantic region and of course eastern quebec as well uh, this was a situation that we have been monitoring for a number of days prior to when fiona actually hit our shores um but as you mentioned, Michael, there are troops on the ground right now, uh, both in HRM in Cape Breton, Prince Edward Island and Newfoundland and Labrador. So as soon as those requests were coming from the provinces, uh, we've been responding with the requisite support and help. I also want to make sure that uh, your viewers know that uh, the government of Canada is going to be matching contributions uh, to the Canadian Red Cross uh, over the next 30 days and perhaps longer if, ne if necessary. But these are going to be important measures. 
In terms of fiscal support from the government of Canada, uh, the model will be similar to what happened in British Columbia, where provinces will actually have the assessment on the ground and will be there to cost share to help make sure that uh, we can be uh, part of not only the cleanup, uh, but the longer term rebuilding of some of these communities, as has been has mentioned. Mm -hmm. When you hear that, Dr. Ellis, when you see the, the moves that the government has made so far, what's your assessment? What are you watching out for right now? You know, I, I think what uh, Atlanta Canadians really want is processes that are timely and processes that are transparent uh, and implemented quickly. Time is of the essence very clearly. Uh, again, cleanup uh, needs to occur uh, immediately if it doesn't, and we have more events, then, uh, then of course that's adding insult to injury. I think the other thing that I mentioned in the House today, Michael, that's very, very important is the decimation of the fishing industry. Uh, certainly on the Northumberland Strait and in Prince Edward Island, uh, we were in the midst of uh, lobster season. Many wharves, of course, have been destroyed that have been uh, perhaps neglected uh, over the years and now they're, they're decimated. So that being said, uh, we need to understand what the process of rebuilding is and, and how that's going to affect perhaps even the length of lobster season so that uh, the Atlantic Canadians are able to continue to feed their families. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Cannings, as you suggested right off top, there's the short term and there's also what you'd like to, to be handled as, as part of the debate in, in the House uh, th this evening. Talk to us about perhaps the more long term picture, because that seems to be something that your party's raising right now. Well, even the, the sort of intermediate term, you know, my experience with uh, some of the uh, disasters we've had in British Columbia. I, my riding uh, Grand Forks was flooded in 2018. We had the floods in Merritt and Princeton, Abbotsford last fall. And the, the immediate response was good and prompt, but these are small communities that, you know, under the federal bureaucracy were expected to shoulder 20% of the, the costs of rebuilding. They simply can't do that. And so we have to kind of move past that bureaucracy and make sure those communities and people are, are taken care of uh, in a prompt fashion. Uh, in BC, we had communities going through the winter uh, still just in devastated form. So that's what I'm looking for in the intermediate term. And in the long term, I think we have to really start facing up to the fact that these storms, these climate uh, events are happening more often, and we really have to plan for them. And we have to put money uh, into not just disaster reaction, but you know, shoring up the coasts, shoring up dikes along rivers, uh, dealing with forest situations for fires. We really have to make sure that we're planning for the future and it will save us money in the future. But, you know, so it's an investment. And that's where I think for the real long term, that's where we have to be start thinking about that, the climate adaptation part of this story. And certainly the, this is going to be a long process. We hear from a lot of different people, the, the rebuild and the cleanup, and now, of course, the debate, which we'll be watching very closely this evening. But for now, uh, Cody uh, Blois, Dr. Stephen Ellis, and Richard Cannings, thank you so much for the time today. Thank, thank you, you Michael. Michael.